Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and Math. Today's topic in oral surgery, it's a very familiar topic that is CPR, Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation. So, not just on an academic point of view, but also on a general point of view, this is a very vital topic because if someone knows this technique, he can save a person's life. So, as the name suggests, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardio means it's related to heart, this is related to lungs. So, we are bringing back the uh, a apparently dead organs to the normalcy. So, apparently dead, not uh, clinically dead, it is apparently dead because of any of the conditions uh, such as uh, heart attack or near drowning. Uh, the person's breathing or heartbeat uh, must have stopped for a while so if someone knows this technique he can bring back the person back to life so any person can do this technique uh, it doesn't require any uh, special degree any special knowledge it doesn't need uh, a expertise on that uh, medical field a layman also can do this technique you just need to understand the basic uh, anatomy of our body organs just in the chest and our neck and head area and also to do a chest compression and a rescue breathing so let's see how to perform this CPR step-by-step -step procedure on a person whose heartbeat or uh, breathing has stopped So before that, uh, we need to understand the anatomy of heart and the lungs, larynx, pharynx and all this bronchial tube and bronchial. So this is a part of uh, heart. We have superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, aorta, pulmonary artery, the two chambers, upper two chambers, lower two chambers, pulmonary veins. So all these things we need to no in detail because uh, we are going to apply pressure on the heart chambers similarly we need to know the position of lungs and larynx and pharynx so we are going to bring back the apparently stopped heart and lungs back to the normal state or a state where we can recover the patient so definition of CPR it is a technique of basic life support okay so this is the important terminology bls so many of us have been trained for this bls so it is a technique of basic life support for oxygenating the brain okay oxygenating the brain and heart until appropriate definite medical treatment can restore the normal heart and ventilatory action so we are trying to oxygenate the brain and heart until appropriate a definite medical treatment can restore the heart and ventilatory action that is a lungs action so what is the exact purpose of cpr one is to maintain a open and clear airway if the airway is uh, hindered with any foreign objects or anything in that matter we need to clear the airway first then we need to maintain a breathing by external ventilation then uh, we need to maintain blood circulation by external cardiac message okay so that is a b c of our cpr this is airway this is breathing and this is a cardiac so the ultimate purpose is to save the life of the patient and to provide the basic life support till medical and advanced life support arrives so we are maintaining or we are prolonging the patient's health condition so that he can recover back to the normal health condition okay so if we are not providing CPR means the patient might die within 5 or 10 minutes. So we are not 
exactly bringing back the patient back to normal state we are prolonging the patient's health status so that he can get a definitive treatment and go back to the normal state so the mainly uh, it is indicated in ventricular fibrillation ventricular tachycardia asystole and pulseless electrical activity so pulseless electrical activity is like we know this is p q r s t that our ecg so it will become like this so that is a pulseless electrical action so it involves ventricular repolarization depolarization and atrial activity so all these conditions we need to give cpr so on what conditions a person faces respiratory arrest so this is mainly uh, seen uh, on drowning when a patient drowns in case of stroke foreign body in throat smoke inhalation drug overdose suffocation accident injury or coma or epiglottis paralysis so all these cases patient might face respiratory arrest so what is the principle of cpr the principle is to restore the effective circulation and ventilation okay then to prevent the irreversible cerebral damage due to anoxia so there can be chance of cerebral damage because of anoxia that is a lack of oxygen so when heart is failed to pump blood and lung is failed to exchange oxygen there is high chance of cerebral damage so once it is completely or irreversibly damaged there is very less chance of recovery so we need to prevent irreversible cerebral damage due to anoxia so when heart fails to maintain the cerebral circulation for approximately 4 minutes so this is a golden time the brain may suffer irreversible damage so we need to give proper cpr within the 4 minutes that is the first 4 minutes when the patient suffers the problem so that is a golden period if you are not giving cpr within the 4 minutes there will be irreversible cerebral damage then there is no scope of recovery so that is why uh, any person has to do a layman has to do this cpr because the person who is facing this problem might be anywhere on the road on the park on the uh, school anywhere so if a person no cpr he can do cpr within 4 minutes so he can sustain for a much longer period and the medical intervention or the advanced treatment can bring back the person to normalcy so what is the procedure of cpr so we are going to learn the procedure so it is a sequence of procedures performed to restore the circulation of oxygenated blood after a sudden pulmonary or or ant cardiac arrest so we are bringing back to or we are trying to restore the circulation of oxygenated blood after the sudden pulmonary that means lungs and or cardiac arrest so cardiac arrest or lung uh, problem we need to bring back the oxygen blood oxygenated blood that is a blood which goes to lungs and get uh, oxygenated or get purified and comes back to heart and pumps to various parts of the body including brain so it includes two things this is why it is very simple one is chest compression and one is rescue breathing so any person can do chest compression and rescue breathing so it doesn't require any special equipments it doesn't require any expertise or uh, any uh, medical knowledge only he has to do chest compression and rescue breathe in a 30 is to 2 manner so i'll explain you that so these are the steps or the step by step procedure of cpr the first one is approach the person safely 
thing is we need to watch the person properly sometimes if patient is suddenly collapsing he might not be on a cardio pulmonary resuscitation need because he might be feeling just a giddiness and he is on a syncope scenario so that time we should not do chest compression or rescue breathing so we need to watch the person properly then check for the response okay we need to call the patient we need to ask are you all right if patient responds then uh, we can leave the patient or leave the person as you find him and we can uh, ask what is wrong what is happening so that patient is not requiring cpr okay so that is the second step so any person who is collapsing any person who is uh, suddenly uh, falling on the ground is not require a cpr procedure so who all need cpr so if the person is not responding okay if the person is not responding first thing we need to do we need to ask for help we cannot be a superman we cannot be a superwoman we need to ask for help okay so once the help been asked then we need to open airway so this is how we need to open the airway of that patient that is head tilt and chin lift uh which any person can do a non healthcare rescuers the procedure is head tilt and chin lift we need to tilt the head and chin so we should not put our fingers into mouth to clear the airway only if we suspect any foreign objects here is entrapped in the airway we can put the fingers and remove that foreign object otherwise we should not put our fingers into that suspected person's mouth so that is the next step open airway then we need to uh, go for the breathing we need to check the breathing we need to assess the breathing is proper or it is a uh, agonized breathing so we can uh, check breathing by looking listening and feeling okay we need to look for the chest and abdomen movements we can listen it and we can feel it so we can uh, go closer to the patient's nostrils and we can see any air passage is happening and we should not confuse the agonal breathing agonal breathing is difficult breathing when a person is in a very distress a person uh, describes uh, a breathing as uh, heavy and is person's breathing is very noisy or gasping type breathing that is agonal breathing that is not the normal breathing what he does so it occurs uh, basically when uh, after the heart stops in up to 40 percentage of cardiac arrest cases okay so it is or it might be a sign of cardiac arrest this agonal breathing patient is trying very hard to breathe so we need to uh, confirm that it is not agonal breathing so normal breathing if it is not there then we should start giving cpr that is chest compression and rescue breathing so once any help we got we need to call for ambulance so it depends from area to area 108 112 so we need to ask for medical assistance because they will be having artificial uh, fibrillator or the better uh, emergency kit so they can easily bring back the person back to normalcy so once we call the ambulance or we seek medical assistance we need to start chest compression okay so that is the most important part so we should not directly jump to step 7 and step 8 we need to go through this because it doesn't take much time it is just 10 to uh, 20 seconds job so chest compression is 30 chest compression after that we need to give to breathing that is a sequence so how do we 
perform chest compression so just like this place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest that is on the sternum that is a mid bone which is a middle part of our two uh, half of the chest then place the other hand on top just like the picture and interlock fingers then compress the chest in a rate of 100 per minute so it should be 4 to 5 centimeter depth we need to push it 4 to 5 centimeter down and we should do equal compression and relaxation we should push relax push relax so if we have a support we can replace the helper after two minutes so if you are doing compression for two minutes then we can ask the next person to take over so once 30 compression is done we need to give two rescue breathing so this is how we do that is a pinch the nose then take a normal breath place lips over uh, so we need to blow very firmly so that the chest rises with the effect of your blow then allow the chest to fall then we need to repeat so after 30 compression we need to give two rescue breathing so that is the procedure so we need to continue this okay we need to continue this until the patient recovers recovers means patient shows some sign of recovery some sign of uh, severe coughing or we get a pulse we can check the pulse radial pulse or arterial pulse so once you get the pulse it might be feeble but still once you get the pulse or he starts uh, breathing or agonal breathing so till that moment we need to keep the CPR okay so this is a life-saving mechanism but still it has got many disadvantages so you might have remembering uh, Michael Jackson the pop singers last moment uh, it was in the news when the person who was giving CPR when he faced his cardiac arrest the person literally broke the ribs because he was giving too much pressure okay so it not give too much pressure so there are so many complications if we are not doing it properly because it can cause coronal vessel injury diaphragm injury hemopericardium hemothorax interference with ventilation liver injury myocardial injury then rib fractures spleen injury and sternal fracture so we should do properly so any person who knows basic anatomy of body and this 30 is to 2 that is just compression or rescue breathing can save a person's life so that's all about CPR this is a commonly asked short note in uh, oral surgery so hope you understood this uh, well-known technique of CPR so I'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you